Hello again everybody and welcome to another episode and the third episode of Your Raw. Um, in these episodes I'm going to be editing other people's raw images and my critique on them. So we'll get stuck into the uh, this this next image, which has been kindly sent in by Paul Slater. So I've just thrown it up there into into Lightroom, and we'll we'll, we'll go and take a look. We'll get rid of uh, that side because we don't need that, do we? One thing I like to do in Lightroom when I'm setting it up is I like to have this this part quite wide. The reason for this is, so I'm in more control of these sliders. Just a, a little tip of mine. That's what I like to do anyway. So okay, so this is the, the raw file. Uh, lovely, I'm going to say this is probably the Lake District, but I'm not sure. Certainly don't recognise the place, but it looks a phenomenal place. We've got the, um, the moon up in the top of the image there and uh, we've got this this waterfall down the bottom just again the bottom there some lovely looks like scotch pines we've got a lovely uh, little uh, it's like a little farm building or something like that I'm not sure if that's where you park actually looking at it or even maybe toilets but it looks a great spot wherever it is it's a great spot okay so let's get stuck into the images what i'm going to do is i've already i've put the highlights on let me just drop them back down so what i would do is the first thing i'm going to do is push the highlights right up and i'm going to push the shadows uh, push the highlights right down shadows right up just so i can view that image a little bit more and see the detail a bit more in the image and what we've got what we've got to work with okay so i'm now going to Drop the, the shadows back down a bit so we'll need to have it more natural. We don't want it so it's too dark, so we're going to have to bring those shadows up. And I also like the, the texture in the sky, so I think we're going to have to keep the highlights right up. There's quite a lot of um, dynamic range going on here. The settings were IS64, F11, 20mm. And a thirteenth of a second. So composition-wise, um, I think what's frustrated me is is we've only just clipping a bit of this water, and then we've got this tree that's in front of it. That's my first issue. I'd have loved to have kept the water in it, but I think I'm going to have to try and crop it out. That's that's my thoughts on that because uh, it. My, my eye goes straight to this this little bit of water then and we've got this tree in front of it um, the only problem we got with that then so let's let's crop it and see if we if we bring that in let's see if that actually makes it better i'm just going to shove it around there let's have a look at that so i, I think that's actually a better image it's almost um making you think what is it in this canyon if you like rather than uh, actually seeing that little splash of water. I think if we'd have made more feature of the water, we'd probably have to be put into a different position. Love the light on the, the casting on this part of the mountain. And I think another thing that could actually um, change the Im image completely would be to actually get rid of almost half of it. I think, I think what's happened is we're trying to stick this moon in just get it in that top at top of the image there but that could actually have sent your your focus off really the main subject which is this this zigzag that comes up into this mountain range here so if we if we'd have cropped if i'd have cropped it like so if we'd have turned that crop round if it'll turn come on turn the crop round let's turn it around there we go yeah and add it more of a crop light so let's just change that crop ratio so we get a bit more in with something around sort of that i think that's a, a 
a better composed image. Um, again, you might just be able to squeeze that water in, but um, again, if we if we crop that out, we're starting to get things aligned a little bit better, in my view. Um, and I actually think that's a better image. Um, or works better because if we go, if we undo the crop, um, if we make that crop bigger again, I mean the mountain range is lovely here, we've got a nice rock here, but there's not a particularly lot going on the right hand side here as well. Even the, um, the clouds are not quite um, so dominant as this left side so that I think is what I'm going to do I'm going to crop it and I'm gonna I am gonna get rid of that water I'm just gonna put it we'll have a look at that that there we can always adjust it what I like about this we have sort of got a a zigzag of it coming up which I think is quite nice so let's just push up them shadows a fair bit more now um, we can just drop the black a very very slightly I'm going to up the whites I'm going to try and bring a bit more detail out in this this sky area so let's I think if we select sky it should select it pretty perfect because there's quite a lot of um, uh, right let's select sky let sky let it do that yeah it's it's quite a sharp edge there so that sky should select perfectly and then we can just drop that down a little bit and if we up the just up the da's a little bit it'll start to bring everything out we, i mean we could put the texture in and clarity might be able to even bring it out we might just leave the clarity up a touch and i still think that looks quite quite natural I would like to then just keep this part more in shadow, but I'd like to lighten this, this area up here as to create that zigzag so that your eye follows from this, this rocks around the back of the trees up to the mountain range and then this lovely sky. Um, so I'm go just going to try and lighten this mid ground up where the, the I think it's toilets. Um, where that this hut is so I'm just going to go local brush I'm going to just up the exposure slightly and up the whites slightly and we can adjust this if it's too harsh but in a way now what I'm trying to do is pick out the already slightly move that, the already slightly highlighted areas as it is so I'm just trying to bring them little areas out but again getting your eye to travel through that image I'm going to try and lighten these rocks up just slightly like I say we can we can really overdo it paint it in and then just soften it back down again and it's it's only just a little um, just little highlights and it gives it depth to the image as well so that's that's just on enough. I think that works quite well. I would like to um, I'll create another brush, and I'd just like to sort of bring some of these trees out a little bit as well in in highlights. So uh, I'm just going to switch that off. We'll come in on the trees, and all I'll do then is get this brush. Sorry, cr create another brush, and we will again. This is it, it's like the dodge and burn. Let's say I'm going to up the exposure and the whites, and I'm just going to try and bring out. I mean, this is quite fine detail. This is, I know it looks a little bit harsh at the moment, but we can. And it's what it will do is it's just give it a little bit more depth to this foreground. Hopefully, I'm going to put a slight bit of warmth in there as well because I think that would suit it better um, we'll just I didn't mean that so we'll undo that 
<laughs> I'll do brush. Uh, we'll just click off the brush a second. We'll move around the image. We'll just paint, pick that brush again. We'll just try and bring that detail out there. Maybe just in this deeper area. Do the same again, same brush. And if you notice, what I'm trying to do is just pick the already slightly highlighted areas of the, the tree out. And we'll just have a look at that. And if we have a look at the difference, it just gives a little bit of depth to it. I think I could also create another brush. Um, of the same sort of exposure and I'm just going to try and bring a little bit of our light out here as well just in that area there I'm also going to bring some in here and again all we are trying to do is create that little bit more detail and depth That's, that's getting there already, I'm quite liking that. Um, I think the next thing I will do is I'm just going to grab a another brush and we're just going to drop the exposure just slightly now and we're going to start putting some shadow in, some more defined shadow. And I want to just put it in this area here, in this area here. Quite nice. I'm also going to make just a bigger brush and we'll just paint it around the top there. That's just bringing that out there. I'm going to get a, add another brush, radial filter, and I just want to bring the centre of the image slightly up with the exposure. So, go quite large, and I'm just going to try and up the exposure slightly then I'm going to get another brush and I'm going to sort of bring a bit of sharpness up on these trees so I'm going to put up the texture I'll up the sharpness slightly and I'm just going to paint over these trees just to make them pop in that foreground there I'm liking that I'm liking that The only thing I think we need now is probably just see if war warming up the image just slightly helps any, which or even dropping it down. I think for me, I think if we warm it up just slightly, somewhere just a little bit just there, I think that might work very well indeed. We can bring if we up the DA is we start to um, really push the image I think let's just have a look do start to really you know we've got this this top part that's too saturated um, but it does make it pop a bit more so what I'm going to do is sort of bring it up but not too much somewhere there and and if we think that this this light on the top is too saturated or the best way I could think of doing it is go to saturation pick the colour and just drop that colour down which would be the oranges like so the problem with that we've got is look it's, it's actually dropped it the lot if we if we drop it down completely so we'll just it's a bit of a balancing act of where we want it which I think is probably somewhere there but we can also bring that them yellows up a little bit because the yellows are sort of the background of the trees if you like so what I'm trying to do is make these trees pop by highlighting the background more 
if we bring the trees, the greens up, when it catches up, there you go, we can see that green. I think I'm just going to just drop the greens down to about there. And I think that's probably the image done. We'll have, we'll have a little look around it. I do like to have a look around the image, see if there's any sort of distractions. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to the crop and see if this water works in it. Oh, it's such a shame, such a shame. But that there is just really frustrating it for me. I know you can hardly see it. I think I'm going to go back to that crop. This, I know this is just a personal preference. But that, that would be my image on, uh, on this shot. Uh, I don't really think we need to do any more than that. We, colour grading wise we can change the odd thing depending on how you feel you want to view the image. But um, I'm going to leave that as it is. Vibrance, or, uh, the saturation, I'm, I'll probably just drop it just real slightly. Um, but that, that has turned out a, a very nice image indeed. We'll have a look at the before and after, shall we? So there's the, there's the before and after shot. Um, as you can see, we've absolutely, totally transformed it. I think the only thing I would do, if we just go back... I might just put, we'll, we'll just correct the image as well before I forget. Chromatic aberration and set the profile. And what I would probably do is put, because I do like a vignette. Mm -hmm. um, but there's two ways I'll, I'll put a vignette in. One is with the, the radial filter like so nice and big put it in situ invert and we'll just drop down the exposure just slightly or the other way i do like to do it is if we um if we remove that filter that mask we can um, pick a brush tool, put the exposure slightly, and what I like to do is manually, manually brush one in. And I think, to be honest with you, I prefer to do this because it looks a little bit more natural. And that I do. And that's my image. Um, thank you very much, Paul, for sending your image in. Um, again, super image, I'd love to know the location. Yeah, till next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying this um, little Your Raw episodes. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you so much and I shall see you next Wednesday.